Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the topic of gradient boosting. And in the last few videos, we talked about XG boost, which stands for extreme gradient boosting. And in this video and the next one, let's talk about light GBM. Okay. And this is also another variation of gradient boosting and the light stands for the light version, which supposedly makes this faster, more efficient, I should say, and uh, also a bit more accurate. And we're going to test this on two data sets. One, the regular Wisconsin breast cancer data set, where we have a CSV file with a whole bunch of attributes or features, and it's a binary classification problem, right? You have either uh, classified as malignant or benign. Let's look at that in today's tutorial. And in the next tutorial, let's uh, add more data, meaning let's actually look at a semantic segmentation example where you have millions of data points rather than hundreds. So first let's have a quick, or let's get a quick understanding of what light GBM is, and then let's jump into the code, okay? And again, I'm not gonna bore you with a lot of details, uh, again, uh, if you really want a lot of details about light GBM, I'll refer you to the documentation. Please look at the link in the description down below. The goal of this tutorial is to make sure that you're aware of something like this exists and you know how to use it in Python. Okay, now, as I already mentioned, light GBM is a variant of gradient boosting. It's supposed to be fast distributed, meaning it's efficient at distributing to, uh, at leveraging your resources and it's high performance and uh, it's, it's gradient boosting, right? And which basically means it's based on the decision tree algorithm, just like XGBoost or even random forest. It splits the tree leaf wise, right? I mean, it tr splits the tree leaf wise. There are many ways you can split these trees and uh, this is how it does it and others do tree wise or level wise. So here is a quick example of what the difference is. Leaf wise tree growth you're actually splitting it based on the leaves and XG boost for example or even random forest they do uh, uh, they do like level wise or tree wise uh, splitting. Now if you don't know what that means again I'll refer you to the documentation go ahead and spend more time trying to understand this if your goal is to use like GBM for your research and you're about to publish a paper obviously it does make sense for you to learn more about it. And uh, just like any other tree uh, algorithm, especially because this grows tree wise, uh, sorry, leaf wise, uh, it can lead to overfitting. This you can actually control a bit by defining the depth of splitting, right? So how far deep you have to go when you're trying to split and number of uh, leaves. Just like XGBoost, again, there are various uh, uh, hyperparameters that you need to define or you can define, I should say. Uh, the default usually works most of the time, but you can get much better performance if you actually tune hyperparameters. Uh, okay, so now let's jump into the code and uh, see this in action so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's exit out of this presentation. Okay, so now here we have uh, the code again as usual. I'm going to share this, so please pay attention to this video and not try to do things while you're watching this for the first time, okay? So as usual, we are importing the libraries, required libraries here. And before jumping in, one quick thing to install this LGBM, just like XGBoost, this is not part of scikit-learn standard package you have to install this uh, separately so go ahead and do pip install light gbm i did not face any issues this is just a straightforward installation okay and uh, again this is the documentation which i'll share you the link to this uh, in the in the uh, description down the, the data set I'm going to use is, again, the uh, Breast Cancer Wisconsin data set. Let's quickly have a look at what it contains. If you watched my previous few videos, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm not going to spend, again, a lot of time talking about the data, but instead uh, jump to the LGBM part. And let's also do this exactly using the same uh, you know, code that we have done a couple of tutorials ago, which is by using XGBoost, okay? And then compare both and see if there is something to be learned there. Okay, so uh, I'm importing NumPy, Matplotlib, Pandas, and I'm also importing date time just to time it. This data set is too small, so it may not reflect the true performance of this. That's why we are doing the next video. Okay, so please stay tuned for that. Uh, and I'm importing ROC AUC score so we can quantify that and confusion matrix so we can again have a visual uh, look at how good our results are and Seaborn just for plotting the confusion matrix. Okay, so just go ahead and uh, uh, let's. Uh, uh, you see, uh, 
if I do my present working directory, I'm probably not uh, in the right directory. So uh, instead of changing the directory over there, I make some syntax error intentionally and run this code and I delete this. There, again, this is so stupid that I'm talking about this, but these are little tricks that may save your time. Now, when I do my present working directory, I'm in the right, uh, I'm in the right uh, directory because in tools and settings uh, of, of Anaconda, Anytime I execute the code, it says, okay, change the directory to the current working directory, right? It's a simple trick. If you want, you can change this directory or you can just run this entire code. Uh, so let's go through this line by line again. So now I can do this, okay? So it's going to, uh, I just restarted my kernel. So it's going to take a second for it to uh, load all these libraries. Once it's uh, loaded, we are all set to go. Let me change this to variable explorer. Okay, so the data is in the form of CSV. So let's go ahead and capture that as a pandas data frame. Again, 32 columns of those 30 are attributes or features. One represents the ID of the patient, I guess, and one represents the uh, label, which is, uh, is it uh, malignant or is it uh, benign, right? So this is what we need to predict. Okay, so I'm going to change the column name of diagnosis to label for reasons I mentioned already uh, in previous videos. And now let's have a quick look at the counts. So here we have 357 labels as benign, 212 as malignant. Now, if you want, you can try to balance the data set, but, uh, but uh, we are not going to worry about it for now, okay? So I just define my Y, which is the label column, as uh, my data frame with the column label and values, because I'm converting this data frame into a NumPy array. Uh, so, so it's easy for us to work with later on. Okay, so there you go. And now if you look at our Y, this actually says M or B. Okay, this doesn't work very well with uh, our machine learning. So we need to convert them into zero or one or one or two. So for that, let's use uh, the, uh, the label encoder from scikit-learn. And once you do this, it reassigns our malignant as one and benign as zero. Okay, so here it is all ones and zeros. Fine, so far, no tricks, nothing. And we have to define our X values that we are trying to model to fit to Y. And our X is every column except for these two, the ones that are label, uh, label and ID. So let's drop them. And now we have our X. Okay, now our feature names, okay? are the column names. So that's all I'm capturing this as a uh, uh, feature names as a uh, array right there. You see, these are all my feature names. Why? Because if I want to plot it later on, if I want to use it, this is a great way of just capturing these, okay? Not, not, not necessary for now. Okay, so we are all set. One uh, final step before we, uh, we just model this or fit this is if you look at your X data, right? This is the data we are trying to use to fit. Uh, the first column has values uh, in tens and twenties, and the next one is tens and twenties. This one is in hundreds, this one is in thousands, this one is one hundredth, like 0 0.01 or so. So the values range in size. So this is not usually good when you're fitting this. So if it's only one feature, fine. You don't have to normalize or standardize or, or scale them. So let's go ahead and scale these values. You can use min-max scalar, you can uh, use standard scalar, and let you can see how much of a difference does it make. But uh, uh, for now, again, we are just uh, normalizing it. So if you look at your X values, now everything should be between uh, whatever the standard uh, weights scaling. If you do min-max scaling, then it would be scaled to the minimum value to the maximum value, okay? All set, now customary to split our data into training and testing data sets. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm taking 80% of my data as training for training, and I'm uh, taking about, uh, as you can see, 20% for testing. Okay, so far so good. So until this point, it's just getting the data ready, right? So now I have my X train, 455 data points, 30 columns each uh, row, and uh, testing has 114, okay? Now let's do our LightGBM. How do you do that? Assuming you installed your LightGBM, I'm going to import LightGBM as LGB. It's easy for us to type that. So let's go ahead and run that line. And now I'm going to define my X train and my labels, right? Label is Y train. So let's go ahead and define my 
uh, LGB dot data set as uh, uh, X train and Y train right there. Okay, so this is basically defining your D train and then we are going to use this uh, to fit the model and uh, let's go through how we do that in a minute. Now, as I mentioned al already, LGB and uh, LGBM and XBoosh, they have a various training parameters or hyper uh, parameters that you can tune. And I just gave a few examples here. This link leads you to a page where you can find all these tens of hyper parameters that you can tune. I just picked the uh, basic ones. Learning rate, obviously this is gradient boosting. Gradient stands for the gradient descent algorithm here and gradient descent uses this learning rate, right? I mean to, uh, to uh, 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 you know, to basically find the minimum in this gradient in, the, in, uh, in your loss function. So learning rate is 0 0.05 and boosting type, how do you want to boost this? Uh, you can use gradient boosting, you can use random forest, or there is something called DART, D-A-R-T. Again, to be frank with you, I haven't looked at the documentation of what DART is, but according to the documentation at a high level, DART seems to be the most accurate uh, way of boosting. Okay, And I did test it, and it did turn out that, yes, DART indeed gives you the best accuracy of all of these, Okay, but I don't know why, sorry. Uh, our objective is binary classification, not regression. Uh, uh, in the next video, let's look at uh, multi-classification. And what metrics? Because this is binary, let's look at binary log loss. We can also look at AUC, okay, area under the uh, curve. Number of leaves, these are the hyperparameters that you need to, in a way, define. Otherwise, uh, you can overfit. So let's define 100 leaves and maximum depth, depth to be 10. Don't ask me what's the appropriate number. You test it out on yours. Uh, max depth 10 is probably appropriate. In terms of number of leaves, I tried 50 to 100. Again, these are all empirical tests that I have actually done, but no, uh, even if you look at the theory, if you look at the, if you look at the documentation, it's very, difficult to predict what the number of leaves need to be for a given type of application unless you do PhD in that field. Uh, if you're just using it, it's, it's, get to, it's difficult to get that type of understanding. Okay, so the way you just define is I'm defining a classifier, which is our LGB, right? We in initiated that, oh, sorry, not LGB, LGB.train, which is light GBM.train. And what parameters do we want to train it using? This is the dictionary we just defined, right? That's the parameters here. And then what type of data? Here is the data, lgb.dataset, xtrain, and label. And 50 is the number of iterations, right? How many times you go through this, and that's 50. So you can go through this 100, for example. Now, you have to realize this number of iterations depends upon your learning rate. If you're going through learning rate, for example, if I put 0.005, that's a very small learning rate and 50 is not enough. You may have to go to 500. So this and this are related, okay? So uh, make sure if you think it's not converging, make sure you increase this to 100 or so. Okay, yeah, the number of iterations. So I'm starting the uh, timer before and after and just calculating the execution time. That's all it is here, okay? And uh, let's go through this. And once this is once this is done, we will have our trained uh, modify uh, sorry uh, model or classifier here CLF. And then the story is the same. You can just go ahead and use your model.predict or CLF.predict on what on our test data. Now, what you get when you do this prediction? Actually, let's go ahead and do that. This data set is very small, so this almost should be instantaneous. So let's go ahead and run these lines. There you go. Uh, and, and it is using like uh, for, for uh, splitting, it's using like some sort of a genie uh, impurity index and all that stuff, okay? Uh, let's not get into how it uh, exactly works. Well, that would be a different video if I have time and if I gain enough knowledge, I'll do one of those. But for now, you should know how to use it. Okay, now look at uh, predict. Why predict GBM? Why predict GBM? Look at these values. I mean, we are supposed to get zero or one, right? Malignant or benign, one or zero but we are getting 0 0.02, 0 0.94. These are all probabilities. So we need to convert this into a threshold or into our classes. So the way we do that is by basically a simple for loop saying that, okay, if the value is above certain threshold, let's put a threshold at 0 0.5. If it's above that, we just uh, change that value to one. If it's below, change that value to zero. Basically anything below 0.5, is uh, zero, anything uh, equal to or above 0.5 is equal to one. That's exactly what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and change it. 
and now you look at uh, the classifications over there okay so once you have it then the next step is okay uh, getting the accuracy i commented this part out because i would like to summarize everything at the end of it because we need to uh, let's also do xg boost and compare these two okay uh, but for now let's go ahead and look at the confusion matrix which gives us a quick idea of how good the accuracy is this is not bad right i mean 70 positively identified as benign right class zero and 40 positively identified as malignant of class one and three misidentified here and one misidentified. This is amazing. This is like great accuracy, probably around 96, 97 ish right here. We'll print that out later on. Let's do exactly the same using XGBoost. Again, I did this in the last uh, two, three videos, so let's not dwell too much time. We define exactly the same way, right? I mean, okay, this is my data, X train and label is Y train. These are my parameters. I mean, in fact, in my previous video, I didn't do it exactly this way, but I rephrased it so you can compare both apples to apples here, right? Exactly the same way we are defining them. And uh, these are my uh, these are my hyperparameters. In fact, I could have added uh, learning rate here. Oh, I did add. Sorry, I thought I didn't add learning rate uh, to the same value, right? 0 0.05. Yeah. So we are using same learning rate. So in a way, we can compare these two. Uh, uh, now uh, the the training part again we are using parameters and uh, our train and 50 iterations okay and we are also calculating the execution time and everything else is exactly the same because we will get probabilities here and convert that and all that stuff and finally let's go ahead and print out the execution time the accuracy and AUC score now in this case because the data set is so small I'm not sure what uh, we can infer, we'll wait and see, but in the next tutorial, let's actually take a, a big data set where we are trying to classify millions of pixels by uh, which is what we call semantic segmentation. So I hope you'll stay tuned for that video, but let's run this entire thing. Let's clear everything. Okay, so hopefully now everything makes sense. So let's run this entire code. It should be relatively quick. XGBoost is very slow, by the way compared to LG, uh, uh, LGBM, but we'll find that out. Is it really or not? Well, in this case, it says that my LGBM execution time is longer than XGBoost. Well, I contradicted my J statement, but hopefully in the next tutorial, we'll find that out. We will find out that uh, LGBM is indeed a bit faster. We'll see. Okay, uh, for now, for all practical purposes, the execution time is uh, uh, XGBoost seems to be faster, almost uh, twice faster. In terms of accuracy, we got LGBM giving 96.5% and XGBoost giving 95.6%. So uh, the accuracy war, uh, LGBM wins. Okay. And which also reflects as AUC score, right? AUC is what is AUC? It kind of tells you. Uh, please watch my video on this topic, okay? It tells you uh, how good a model is for a given type of problem right here. So LGBM model seems to be 96.7% here and 95.5%. It's not like XGBoost is bad. It's just that LGBM is doing a uh, better job. Now, uh, before ending this video, let's quickly look at changing this GBDT to DART. Oh, sorry. Uh, DART and see if this makes any difference. Uh, remember right now with uh, uh, with gradient boosting, we got 96.7% and let's run this one more time and see if that makes any difference. Uh, as you can see, the LGBM 97.3%. So DART is indeed a more accurate, uh, you know, boosting type for, for, for this uh, light GBM. Again, I'm sorry, I do not know why, but now you know what to use to get the best accuracy. So please stay tuned for the next video where we'll discuss, uh, where we'll discuss uh, exactly the same, but on semantic segmentation for images. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel.